the top stories tonight in Y News. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. seeks to modernize fish ponds to boost fish production in the country. The camp of actor-comedian Bong Navarro believes that his case is now put to an end after almost 10 years. The oil tanker empty Princess Empress that sank off the waters of Nahuan Oriental Mindoro had no permit to operate as revealed in today's Senate inquiry. And U.S. President Joe Biden approves Alaska's oil drilling project despite opposition from environmentalists. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, the 14th of March, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV news and rescue social media channels. I am Hardin Delgado. First in the news, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. presided over a sectoral meeting attended by officials of the Department of Agriculture and other concerned agencies. The chief executive discussed the Philippine fisheries program specifically on how to address the declining fishery production and reduce post-harvest losses. Nel Maribuhok reports. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. underscored the need to improve the aquaculture in the country by modernizing the fish ponds to boost production. This is what President Marcos emphasized during his sectoral meeting in Malacanang. At ang pinakamalaking problema na, na, na uh, nakita namin is the provision of credit na binibigyan may pautang para sa ating mga fishermen para naman meron silang gagamitin, meron silang uh, puhunan para pagandahin ang kanilang uh, fish pan. Modernizing the fishery sector is part of government efforts to ensure food security in the country. PBBM said he wants to push for the conversion of fish cage to also improve the local fisheries production. Tapos yung, uh, yung conversion to fish cage uh, na mas malaki ang production kasi pag fish cage. So yung, bago, yung, yung ganyang klaseng teknolohiya, kailangan natin ituro at uh, siyempre kailangan natin bigyan ng pondo para yung mga bagong gamit, uh, yung mga kailangan, kailangan ng supplies ay mag, 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 makuha naman ang ating mga fishermen. The chief executive said they are also looking at mariculture to bolster the country's food security and fish output. He added that the government would be putting up several cold storage facilities in various fish ports in the country to address the spoilage of the fishermen's catch. So, naggumawa uh, kami ng plano, may plano ongoing, nagtatayo tayo ng fit ng college facilities, may expansion sa mga ibang lugar kagaya ng Jensen, ni CDO na meron na silang facility at meron bang mga ilalagay uh, sa ibang lugar. All together 11 areas uh, will be uh, we will be installing cold storage. President Marcos Jr. pointed out that if the country would be able to lower the spoilage of the catch between 8 to 10 percent, the Philippines would no longer depend on importing fish from other nations. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The camp of actor-comedian Vong Navarro believes that his case is now put to an end after almost 10 years. Dante Amento will tell us why. After the Supreme Court Third Division ruled to dismiss the rape by sexual intercourse and acts of lasciviousness cases against Vong Navarro filed by model Denise Cornejo in 2014, his legal team believes the case is now over. This is a vindication for him. At least now, everything will be put to an end. Attorney Maggie Abraham Garduque said Navarro's liberty is now permanent. His uh, liberty is not anymore temporary, but is now considered permanent because of the decision of the uh, Supreme Court reversing the uh, decision of the Court of Appeals. The Supreme Court's decision is allegedly tantamount to acquittal. 
Hence, Cornejo's camp can't file a motion for reconsideration. Vong Navarro, on the other hand, because of the Supreme Court did, his trust in our justice system turns back. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Supreme Court granted the request of Justice Secretary Crispin Rimulia to transfer the cases filed in connection to the killing of Negros Oriental Governor Roel de Gamo to the Manila Regional Trial Court or RTC. The court considered the hostile environment in Negros for the respondents or suspects. And since three of the victims are politicians and government officials, it will also lead to the intimidation and harassment of the suspects, complainants and other witnesses. The court also considered the logistical difficulties if the trial will be in Negros, but the suspects are now detained here in Manila. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, or CIDG, filed raps against the Secretary of Negros Oriental, 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Tevez, and five others. Among the cases filed are, are violation of Republic Act 10591, or Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Law, and Republic Act 9516, or Illegal Possession of Explosives. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, or PNPCIDG, filed charges against the six staff of Negros Oriental 3rd District Representative Arnolfo Tevez, including his secretary, identified as Haname Somerano Orai. The case is connected with the firearms and explosives and ammunition seized by the authorities in the properties of Tevez during the raid last Friday, March 10. PNP spokesperson Police Colonel Jean Fajardo said the raid was conducted in five properties of Congressman Tevez in Basay and Bayawan Negros Oriental. Among the cases filed are violation of the Republic Act 10591 or Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Law and Republic Act 9516 or Illegal Possession of Explosives. Tatlo po yung properties na subject po ng search warrant po ng CADG. Yung dalawa po doon na properties ay kasama po sa nakasuhan na po sina Congressman Tebes po doon at uh, kasama po yung mga arrested po. Yung sinasabi ko po na nakaschedule pong uh, i-file if not today, tomorrow po, yung mismo nga residente po niya na nakapangal, naka at least naka-identify po na property po niya. Colonel Fajardo added, the CIDG is also preparing a case against Congressman Tevez and his two sons due to illegal firearms and ammunition found in his residence in Bayawan. All the arrested persons were now under the custody of the CIDG Regional Field Unit National Capital Region. Yung uh, mismo uh, residence po ni uh, Congressman uh, Tebes at kanyang mga anak ay uh, inaasahan po natin kung hindi man po ngayong araw ay bukas po ay uh, isasampa po ng CIDG yung uh, kaso laban sa kanila dahil may mga narecover po ng mga loose firearms and explosives doon po mismo sa bahay po nila. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A House bill was filed seeking to increase the daily wages in the private sector to 750 pesos. However, according to an employer's group, increasing wages may cause many workers to lose their jobs. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. The Employers Confederation of the Philippines, or ECOP, worried that small companies might find it difficult to adjust if the proposed House Bill for a 750 pesos daily wage would be passed. House Bill number 7568 was filed by Gabriela Women's Party List Representative Arlene Rosas, which aims to increase the daily wages of the private sector across the board. This includes workers in the agricultural and non-agricultural enterprises. According to Representative Brosas, this would help Filipino workers amid the rising commodity prices. However, Eco President Sergio Ortiz said this would only benefit the few. Hindi 
Ortiz also explained that the living wage covers several factors and is not only based on the minimum wage of an employee. Companies, especially the micro, small, medium enterprises, might resort to cutting their workforce if the law passed. However, Representative Brosas defended the said bill. According to the lawmaker, companies under ECOP can provide a 750 pesos daily salary for their employers. Aileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And foreign news abroad, Cyclone Fede has killed more than 100 since its landfall in Mozambique and in Malawi, forcing Malawi's President Dr. Lazarus McCarthy Chakwera to declare a state of disaster in the country's southern region. Ia De Vera will give us the details live. Good evening, Ia. Good evening, LC. Ten districts in Malawi's southern region have been declared under a state of disaster, according to a press release issued yesterday by Malawi's Office of the President. According to authorities, Malawi has now recorded an estimated death toll of 99 bodies, 85 of which were from Blantyre District, and hundreds of victims continue to flow into hospitals for treatment, with most injuries caused by falling trees and roofs, flash floods, and landslides. Cyclone Freddy first battered Mozambique on Saturday before hitting the border of Malawi. Mozambique and Malawi have now both recorded more than 100 fatalities and closure of schools in certain districts until tomorrow, Wednesday. The World Meteorological Organization has illustrated Cyclone Freddy as a very rare storm and been dubbed as the longest-lasting cyclone to have affected Malawi, Mozambique and Madagascar. As the government pledged to continue its emergency assistance, volunteer efforts have also been on the ground to support rescue and evacuation of residents. Meanwhile, scientists explained that such disaster could be attributed to fossil fuel-driven climate change. It makes cyclones stronger than what it should really be as the greenhouse emissions get absorbed by the oceans and when warm seawater dissolves heat energy is removed to the air. United Nations agencies, on the other hand, warned that the effects of Cyclone Freddy will worsen the deadliest cholera outbreak that Malawi has been battled for some time. The Department of Climate Change and Meteorological Services, or DCCMS Malawi, have issued a warning that Cyclone Freddy will continue to bring strong winds but is expected to ease up on Wednesday. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Ia De Vera, reporting live from New Zealand. In his first Commonwealth Day address, King Charles III has broken away from tradition by speaking in person at Westminster Abbey to around 2,000 representatives from the 56 countries in the Commonwealth. The king told representatives from the Commonwealth that he drew inspiration from his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II, who traditionally addressed the annual gathering in a pre-recorded message. And with all that he has learned from the extraordinary people he has met throughout the Commonwealth over the years. He also called for action on climate change, stating that the Commonwealth has an incredible opportunity and responsibility to create a future of prosperity in harmony with nature, securing planet for generations to come. Despite anti-monarchy protests that met the royal family as they arrived for the service, King Charles and the Queen Consort Camilla ignored the disruption and received a traditional Maori welcome outside the Abbey. Member countries showcased their culture with performances by the Rwanda ballet dancers in the aisles and a rendition of Waltzing Matilda. Commonwealth Day occurs on the second Monday of March each year and is marked by an annual service at Westminster Abbey. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Elsie. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. 
The Land Transportation Office, or LTO, launches an online complaint center to improve their customer service and get rid of fixers. JP Nunez will tell us why. The Land Transportation Office, or LTO, said they are receiving a huge number complaints from the offices nationwide on a daily basis. However, some of them were not addressed due to the system where complainants need to manually fill out a complaint form. Alam po namin sa LTO na medyo meron po kaming uh, pagkukulang at malaki pa po ang aming kailangan i-improve pagdating po sa customer service namin. To address this issue, the LTO launched an online complaint and feedback platform earlier today, March 14. Complainants may now raise their concerns through digital platform. A QR code has been placed to LTO transaction windows which will direct them to an online form named as Isumbong Mo Kai Chief. Complainants may select their concern against the agency. This could be a corrupt employee, bad-tempered employee, slow service, unpleasant surroundings, humid waiting area, with the presence of fixers, no public restrooms, and other concerns. Within the day, hopefully, my result, depending on the complexity of the questions. LTO Chief J.R. Togade said this complaint platform is also part of their anti-fixing campaign in the agency. Hopefully, by having this in our offices, this will serve as a deterrent uh, maski pa paano para po doon sa mga tao na umaaligid sa aming mga opisina dahil po uh, pwede pong ireklamo ng mga tao po na nagtatransak sa LTO kung meron po silang uh, may encounter na, na fixer. Some of the agency's clients believe in the good intention of the project and agrees to its role to get rid of fixers. Tama po yan na mismo. Hindi dapat mapunta sa fixers. Matry natin to kung gaano ka bilis para masawata yung mga fixer na nasa labas lang. Siyempre pag sa fixer na lumapit, hindi mo tinahan sa proseso, tamang proseso. Dadamit dadami ha kasi fixer yan, hindi kagaya ng isumbong mo kagad sa ito ngayon, kagaya ng ginawa nila ngayon. Direkta na tayo, hindi na tayo dadaan pa sa fixer. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Cebu government announces to craft its own policy in addressing the cases of African swine fever or ASF. Meanwhile, the Bureau of Animal Industry or BAE stands by the accuracy of the ASF testing that they are conducting. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The local government of Cebu province suspended the culling of hogs in African swine fever or ASF infected areas in Carcar City. Governor Gwen Garcia said that they will implement other approach in handling the ASF cases. The official question, the ASF test conducted by the Bureau of Animal Industry or BAI in Carcar City that resulted to positive. Governor Garcia suspected that the discovered disease is cholera because they see no massive deaths as the one of the manifestation of ASF. The DOH has already issued an advisory that ASF, even if this pork is ASF infected, it is not harmful to humans. I researched neither is cholera infested pork. So why get it from slaughterhouses? The governor already stopped the cutting operation of hogs in Karkar City within the 500 meter radius from the infected area. There are 143 called hogs and it will be paid 5,000 pesos each as compensation, the official added. The last barangay is Guadalupe. I said, okay, immediately stop. Stop the calling. We will just prohibit exit of this. But now, as with all the other mayors that were here, I said, we will now do our own policy as what we did during COVID-19. Governor Garcia said they will look for other way on how to test if a hog is infected with cholera or ASF. But the Bureau of Animal Industry assures that their protocol is effective and the testing that they are conducting is accurate. The blood is the best sample to detect whether the virus is present or not in the animal. And RT-PCR is the best or the gold standard for the test. So any positive sa RT-PCR will tell you na meron talagang infection. 
Hog Racers Group favors the move of the local government, hoping that this may open new strategy in addressing ASF in the country. The group's chairperson Chester Tan said that the uncertainty of the compensation for affected farmers pushed them to hide their stocks. We also want to know ano yung magiging result yung stop muna natin, tingnan natin, baka naman hindi ito, hindi ito ASF kasi baka ito naman yung maging uh, eye-opener natin. The Department of Agriculture will closely coordinate with the local government unit or LGU to address the issue on ASF. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, eyes to collect taxes from online sellers and other e-commerce platforms. BIR Commissioner Romeo Lumagi Jr. said they find it challenging to monitor taxes on individual online sellers and the agency now seeks ways to approach. As of 2022, the Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, reports that there are around 2 million online sellers in the country. The Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, reported that the inflation rate in the Ilocos region has declined to 8.3% for the month of February. This is lower than the 9.3% inflation rate reported in January. PSA said this is due to the lower prices of basic necessities, including food and utilities. The agency added that the overall food index in the Ilocos region slows down to 10.9% in February, contrary to the 12.2% from the month of January. The Department of Education eyes rolling out of national programs for math, science and reading in 2023. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. Recent studies show low average score among students in K-12 program enrolled in private schools in the country. Based on the Philippine Assessments for Learning Law Solution or PALS, 3,600 students have an average score of 47.5% in math subject, 54.1% in science, and 61.5% in English. These scores are low in accordance with the standard passing score set by the Department of Education. DepEd spokesperson Michael Poa says learning loss was being experienced even before the pandemic, but has worsened after implementation of online classes in the last three years. To improve the level of basic education in the Philippines, POA reiterates prioritizing learning recovery of students. Tayo naman po ay meron tayong mga programa na gusto nating may roll out na this year. Yan po yung ating National Reading Program, National Science Program, at National Math Program. So yun po, you know, in the near future, yan yung mga tinitingnan nating programa para po mabridge pa natin lalo yung gaps natin sa ngayon. As long-term solution against learning loss, DepEd further says they are continuously revising the K-12 curriculum, which they say is congested for students. Meanwhile, the Federation of Associations of Private Schools and Administrators, or FAPSA, on their part, recommends getting a tutor for students to help with learning loss, but it will be at the expense of the parents. So, siguro, ang um, pwedeng may offer from, from us, no, na, na, na school administrators sa private schools, siguro baka mag ano, ng tutor, malalaman ng, ng tutor kung ano yung medyo, anong, anong part ng, ng unit o ng, ng pinagkaralan ang hindi niya makuha. Doon mag, mag, ano, mag, mag, uh, magbibigay ng emphasis, makakakabul pa yung bata dyan. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Australia to build a new fleet of eight nuclear-powered submarines under a multi-billion AUKUS deal. Marvi Dolphin explains why live. Yes, Marvi? LC, after 18 months of intense consultations, U.S. President Joe Biden, U.K. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, and Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese finally announced the nuclear submarine deal at the U.S. Navy Point Slama base in San Diego, California on Tuesday morning, March 14. 
The three-decade mammoth transformation in Australia's defense is expected to cost from $268 billion to $368 billion by 2055. Australia's new fleet of nuclear-powered submarines fitted with vertical launch systems to fire cruise missiles, according to a joint design with the UK called SSN AUKUS, will be built in Adelaide, South Australia. While this year will immediately see increased visits of U.S. submarines, followed by U.K. submarines from 2026. Then from 2027, the United States Navy and the Royal Navy nuclear-powered submarines will be stationed at the expanded naval bases in Perth, Western Australia. To ensure full capability come 2030, three U.S. Virginia-class nuclear-powered submarines will be delivered to Australia pending U.S. congressional approval. This is the first time the U.S. has shared its nuclear propulsion systems with another country since a similar agreement was formed with the U.K. back in 1958. In a media release, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said this was the biggest single investment in Australia's defence capability in the country's history and would require a whole-of-nation effort. To support this AUKUS project in the next 30 years, over 20,000 workers are needed to man the Australian Defence Force, the domestic industry and the Australian Public Service. An additional 8,500 will also be required to build and service the Marines. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Marvi Delphine, reporting live from Perth, Australia. America's President Joe Biden authorized the $8 billion U.S. dollars drilling project on Alaska's North Slope, sparking outrage among environmentalists who argued that it would pose health and environmental risk with its carbon pollution. Nerissa Dando will tell us why. U.S. President Joe Biden has given a go signal to Conoco Phillips Willow Project on Monday, March 13, to drill oil and gas on the 23 million acre National Petroleum Reserve, Alaska, which aims to produce up to 180,000 barrels of crude a day. Covering three sites with 219 wells, the project is said to create 2,500 jobs during construction, 300 permanent jobs, and generate 17 billion in royalties and tax revenues for federal, state, and local governments. In light of this approval, the Natural Resource Defense Council's policy chief, Christy Goldfoss, also expressed her dismay about the climate and environmental impact of the project for the native Alaska communities. Meanwhile, environmental activists are strongly promoting the hashtag Stop Willow campaign through social media and calling the project a carbon bomb, reminding Biden of his campaign promise to stop new oil drilling on public lands and promote clean energy. On Sunday, March 12, the White House announced that Joe Biden would prevent or limit oil drilling in 3 million acres of the Beaufort Sea in the Arctic Ocean, as well as protecting 13 million acres of special areas preserving the habitats for Arctic animals like whales, seals, polar bears, and other wildlife. Nirisa Dando, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Junior doctors in England began their three-day strike on Monday following their demand to increase pay by 35% due to higher inflation. From London, United Kingdom, here's Joanna Ochoa to tell us the details live. Yes, Joanna? Elsie, thousands of junior doctors in England started a three-day strike on Monday requesting for a 35% rise in pay. Although junior doctors have agreed for an annual 2% pay rise in 2019, but due to higher inflation, this is now inadequate. The British Medical Association, or BMA, says that the starting salary of a junior doctor can be as low as 14 sterling pounds per hour, or 941 Philippine peso, equal to the top-level salary for a barista at a British coffee chain. The BMA argues that they are just asking to restore the pay cut over the last 15 years. British Health Minister Steve Barclay, however, said that the demand is unaffordable but have invited the BMA to have formal discussions regarding pay.
This will likely be the most disruptive industrial action to patient care as they will prioritize emergency care during the strike, delaying appointments, surgeries and some urgent cancer treatments. Meanwhile, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is under pressure to try to end walkouts by health workers, hindering one of his major priorities of shortening long lists of patients waiting for treatments. Elsie? Thank you, Giovanna Ochoa, reporting live from London, United Kingdom. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. The oil tanker empty Princess Empress that sank off the waters of Nahuan Oriental Mindoro had no permit to operate as revealed in today's Senate inquiry. Meanwhile, the governor of the province expressed his frustration over the supposed lack of leadership in the government's response in addressing the oil spill. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. The Maritime Industry Authority, or Marina, confirmed in today's Senate hearing that empty Princess Empress, the oil tanker that sank off the waters of Oriental Mindoro, had no permit to operate. The agency says it has yet to approve the amended Certificate of Public Convenience, or CPC, of the ship's company, RDC Real Marine Services, that will effectively include the empty Princess Empress in their official fleet. Yung RDC, my pending application which we are going to hear pa sana may hearing. May kulang na mga documents. Hindi sila naisuhan kaagad. So dapat, sir, kung wala pang amended CPC, hindi pa naidagdag sa CPC ng RDC itong Princess Empress, hindi dapat na nakalayag ito. Tama po? Dap dapat po. RDC Vice President Fritz C.T. says they submitted an application to Marina to amend their CPC last November 2022. However, she admits that the sunken vessel had sailed nine times even without the amended permit. We, we submitted all the documents required. Um, the last submission was December 2. Kung sa insurance po kasi, I think they asked for the CPC, but the CPC, meron po kaming valid CPC. RDC Senators then questioned why the sunken vessel was allowed to sail despite the lack of permit and prior inspection of the Philippine Coast Guard or PCG. The PCG admitted there were missing documents based on the pre-boarding inspection checklist. Lumalabas po sa investigasyon po na um, may kulang sa kanilang pag-inspect which is the boarding. Diba dapat sumasampa yung mga member ng Philippine Coast Guard, hinahapan ng papeles, titignan yung crew, tinitingnan yung laman. So kung ginawa nyo yun, napigilan sana maglayag yun, wala sana nangyari ngayon na all speed. The PCG says investigation is now underway and will recommend filing of administrative cases against the involved PCG personnel that conducted the inspection. The ship tanker's owner adds they are now in coordination with the insurance company for the processing of claims. Meanwhile, Oriental Governor Homer Lito Dolor expressed his frustration over the supposed lack of leadership in the national government's response. Hindi ko to trabaho, trabaho to ng Coast Guard na magpapasok ng ROB dito. Pero sinong kumagawa ng paraan? Sinong tumatawag kay Secretary Bautista? Sinong kumakausap sa PS, uh, PCG? Sinong kumakausap sa PPA? Bureau of Quarantine. Si Governor Dolor, Sabado, Linggo, umiperma ng sulat. Ginagawa niyo akong sekretaryat. Na baka naman po po pwede. Yung NDRRMC, sabay-sabay mag-usap. Isang cabinet dadating sa amin, thank you. Isang cabinet dadating sa amin, thank you. Isang cabinet dadating sa amin, thank you. Hindi pa pwedeng sabay-sabay. The law urges the ship owner to help in providing assistance to thousands of families affected by the oil spill. The University of the Philippines Marine Science Institute says it is crucial for the oil spill to be addressed before the northeast monsoon finally ends. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Coast Guard or PCG releases a copy of the Certificate of Public Convenience or CPC for the sunken MT Princess Empress. This was after it was revealed in today's Senate hearing that the sunken ship was allowed to sail even without the said permit. The documents show that the amended CPC of the owner of the ship, 
RDC Real Marine Services was approved on September 2022. However, Maritime Industry Authority or Marina admitted earlier during the Senate hearing that they have yet to approve the ship owner's application for the amended CPC. The PCG during the hearing also admitted that there were lapses in the inspection, including missing documents. According to a marine biologist, in addition to the death of fish and seashells living in the mangroves, the effect of an oil spill may be long-term on the natural habitat of shells and fish. Like the oil spill that happened in Guimaras, although the mangroves have recovered, they have not yet fully grown. According to marine biologist Giovanni de Jesus, the contaminated oil has an ingredient that can cause cancer in humans in the long term. Oceania, the private organization, is helping to gather information on the extensive impact of the oil spill on marine resources in Oriental Mindoro. The Department of Health has recorded adolescents being infected with human immunodeficiency virus or HIV in January 2023. And peer pressure might also be a factor, says the DOH. Gladys Tuwabi will tell us why. The Department of Health has recorded Filipino teenagers and children getting infected with HIV in January 2023. DOH has recorded 86 newly reported cases, aging 19 years old and below. Of the said cases, 79 were adolescents and 7 were children. Wala naman talagang pinipiling edad ang HIV. Kailangan lamang po talagang ating mga kababayan makapag-ingat, malaman natin kung saan ito nanggagaling at paano tayo mapoproteksyonan. The DOH says peer pressure might be among the factors why adolescents were infected. Uh, it is not just lack of awareness, but it might also be peer pressure, especially their adolescents. It can also be the accessibility of this kind of uh, engagement or interactions with other partners. Uh, ito po yung mga tinitignan natin. Ang isa pa, accessibility to social media. In line with this, the department asks parents to monitor and guide their child to prevent from getting infected. Meron pong mga sakit na maaari natin makuha kapag tayo ay unsafely na gumagawa ng iba't ibang mga behavior. Pangalawa, sana po yung ating mga magulang mapagsabihan din natin ang ating mga anak na para maiwasan po natin ang mga ganitong practices at hindi po sila magkasakit. In January 2023, DOH has recorded 1,454 confirmed HIV cases. Unlike before, HIV is no longer considered as a death sentence. The public is encouraged to avail free HIV testing in their respective local government units. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Our Kasang Bahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. We will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 8, it says, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Reasons behind the news, March 14, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harding Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.